Many people ask me, do I actually have any personal friends? The answer is no, but I lose poker money to this guy, Pablo Kiosef, who runs the International Film Series at the CU campus. And I've seen this guy drunk too many times to mention, Glenn Webb <laughs> from the Bodecker Theater up in, in, in Boulder. Um, first of all, can you both say how wonderful I am? No. Sir? Well, at the poker table, we are very much appreciated, for sure. Yeah, I'm so. just, just going to put online donations yeah. next time. Yeah. All right, both of you guys are in what I call independent film or art house films. You both run weird little theaters that run weird little movies. Would that be the good way to put it? Start over here. Um, the International Film Series has actually been around since 1941, and it's a calendar film series, so it's you, seasonal. You look good for your age. Thanks. And uh, <laughs> we uh, have about 100 films, and we're still keeping 35 millimeter alive. Um, you actually have a projector there. We still have reel-to-reel uh, -reel projectors. Uh, we dedicate our Thursday nights to all 35 millimeter prints, and we just call that vintage. Does that, does that matter? It actually it does to me, and, and, and for anyone who maybe just went out to see the uh, uh, you know, Quentin Tarantino's latest film. Um, I know that that was actually a big draw, this whole attempt to, you know, revitalize 70 millimeter. Um, and I went over to see it actually at the um, AMC in Westminster. That was one of the places that had it. Um, on, on film. Opening night, opening night on 70 millimeter. And it was packed. It was sold out, so it still has definitely a draw. Um, uh, that was just the violence. Well, mm, yeah. well, I'm sure there were people there for that alone, but um, there was a lot of people there that I knew and talked to who were there because they wanted to see the, the difference, you know, the, the and you, quality, but you, the you, texture. You put out all sorts of different movies, whether do. it's documentaries, in, independent films, all, all sorts of things. You do the same thing at the Bodecker, the Dairy Center up, up in Boulder. How do you choose the films? Um, we basically go on three different criteria. Uh, the f first is does it have an audience in Boulder? Will people in Boulder come out and see it? So that's, you know, They'll butts do and anything. Seat. It's Boulder. Well, not if it not involves true. a dog dying or <laughs> um, a gun. Or a gun, then they won't. <laughs> I believe that we actually tried to do a movie with, uh, that, that you were in favor of, a documentary about guns. And I thought it would be kind of fun to uh, mix Oh, yeah, we were there. Over. And you were the only people there. <laughs> we're gun people. Yeah. Well, we were all packing heat, <laughs> so that was a good thing. Oh, thanks for scaring my customers away. <laughs> it was my pleasure, yeah. any time. No, obviously, Boulder is a, is a market that's somewhat unique in its tastes. And so being able to cater to that matters because if you show a movie to an empty theater, well, then it you know, might as well not bother. But that's not the only criteria. Um, the other one is, does it have any uh, social or political importance or relevance? Is it a movie that's important right now historically in terms of things that are going on and illuminating issues that are of some concern to people? And then the last uh, criterion that we use is, is it aesthetically worthwhile? Because sometimes you'll have a movie that may be able to draw an audience and may even be about something that's important, but it's almost impossible to watch. I remember you know, back in college, Boulder had like three or four art houses. Sure. And they would, they would play really wild films, and also the film series was there. And they, they've all been kind of gobbled away, mm -hmm. partly because you're watching it at home on VHS back then, but then, you know, other things. And then the blockbuster cinemas, you're getting into smaller theaters, and it just kind of, people didn't go out as much. Is there still a market, I mean, I'm talking nationwide, for people who want to see films it's, in it's, a theater that, not, that are just not the blockbusters? I can, I, can, I can definitely tell you that the numbers have been dwindling for, for quite a while, and it's not just because of the changing economics of studio films and all that, it's also because of all the different platforms that are available for people to watch movies on, Netflix and Hulu, and, and also binge watching, and, and the quality of TV shows that have gone up, and I mean, that's all there, and that's all competing. Um, for, you know, our ability to put butts in the seats. Um, but at the same time, uh, we, I think, uh, I'll speak for Glenn on this one, is we're providing a space that uh, is still kind of essential for people where they can kind of sh have a shared experience. And at this point, I want to sort of draw a line and separate us from the multiplexes because just to give you an example, I went to go see The Big Short the other day. Uh, I got there uh, 15, 20 minutes early and um, it's just, it's nothing but commercials. 
and me and my date were like, we can't even talk to each other. So we, we left. That's incredible. And we, you, wait, well, wait, I, I want to say you this. You had a date? <laughs> <laughs> yes, touche. Um, but what Glenn and I provide is um, a very different kind of space. That is, um, it's definitely more about um, creating something for the movie lover where you can go and feel comfortable and it's also about the community and having conversations. We both have special guests that come or uh, have introductions or talkbacks. Um, and that so it's more it's more like th cinema that we fell in love with, which was... You know, uh, it's an event. It's an event. It, As it, opposed to just something that you watch on a screen. Right. I mean, if, if, it's, if nothing but a, something you watch on a screen, younger audiences are very platform promiscuous. They'll watch it on their phone, so they're not that interested necessarily in a cinema experience unless you offer them something more than just the movie. You offer them a really good conversation. You offer them... The guy who made it, the director, comes exactly. in and talks about it or experts talk about whatever the issue was afterwards. Or even just something crazy and fun like you show Monty Python's and the Holy Grail and you ha offer them coconuts for free to bang together to which, make the horse sounds. Which you do, which was great. Right. Yeah. All right, so, but, but you know, I remember both of you are film nuts, and I, uh, you love horror movies, which I haven't quite figured out, but uh, I haven't figured you out after you know, 30 years. So Neither have I. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, but the idea of that shared experience, it's, it, it's, it's not that you're doing it to share an experience. It's just more enjoyable. Well, when you see a comedy, for instance, absolutely. You know, other people are laughing. It makes you laugh. It changes the mood of, 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 the, of, the, of the show. And for horror films, it's the same thing. You actually, it, it's like for anyone who's... Um, if you don't if if you don't like flying and you get on a plane the way you smell when you get off that plane it's a very different kind of a smell you've emitted some you know it's like a curdled milk sort of a smell really and when you're watching horror films everyone is basically it's basically like there's a cathedral of smells in that that hangs in the air above people who are all experiencing the same thing and it heightens your experience of that event. I'm buying you more deodorant. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the, the natural smell of vision. <laughs> yeah. Smell of vision. Um, but there's still hardcore folks who want it. Yeah, Boulder's a weird kind of place, but there's still places in Denver and other places where film is enjoyed. And if it's not film, it's still video, but that art house, that this is not a place where you go and watch 15 minutes of commercials before you get to the show. This is, this is about the show. Well, Art House, let's just to clear, clarify things on a national level in terms of business, Art House is a thriving sector of a fairly unhealthy industry. That the overall cinema industry of theatrical appointment driven, you got to go to a movie at a specific time in a specific place kind of thing, that model of going out and seeing things in a theater, movies in a theater, is having a lot of trouble as an overall industry. But art house is a sector of that industry, although we're very small, we're less than 5% of the overall industry. Art house is growing while the industry is flat or shrinking year to year. It, it's, it's a great, fun experience. And you see movies you'd never be able to see. Although, that, when we went to college, you'd never see these type of movies except at the art house or at your place, the International Film Series. But now you can see a lot of this stuff by rental, by DVD, online, even YouTube, you can see a lot of this stuff. Well. Again, um, I do think format matters, and I do think the, you know, the environment matters. And um, I mean, and there are people who are pretty hardcore too. At one point, like for example, I showed this um, um, seven and a half hour long black and white film, uh, and we only took one break. And we actually had about 65 people who showed up for this, which I know it doesn't sound like a lot when compared to the Force Awakens, but when you're talking about a seven and a half hour long black and white movie, <laughs> I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah. And this is why you having a date surprises and me. And <laughs> specifically, this was something that um, the experience of seeing that on film, uh, again, is not something, it had a hypnotic quality that would not right. uh, translate if you were just watching it on a laptop. I'll give you one more example, which I think, especially as someone who's on campus a lot, um, I love 2001, A Space Odyssey. And I, I love it so much that I've actually made pilgrimages to see it when it's been shown on 70 millimeter, for example, in Seattle, and then more recently at the uh, Hollywood Theater in Portland. Um, and the, and th those screenings were packed, um, enthusiastic audiences, and to see that movie um, on that big screen in 70 millimeter, it was just- With people was, who were also into it. Who were also into it, yeah, it was amazing. 
Um, you could hear a pin drop during all those quiet moments. But wait, let me get to this. Then, meanwhile, when I talk to students, who are like film students too, who should be really like big Kubrick fans, um, and I'll mention 2001, and almost like 80% of the time, there's basically a response that suggests that, well, they were bored. It was really slow. And I ask them as a follow-up, well, how did you watch it? And it's on their laptop. And not only that, but they're scrubbing through because it's like, oh, it's so slow. So they're going, you know. Oh, so and would, would an analogy be watching a film in, a, in, in one of these places is like going to a live concert, watching it on YouTube or Netflix, it's like listening to your favorite band. It might be great on, on DVD or, or um, you know, you're listening to it on the radio, but it's not, it's not a concert. And right. that film, film is, is a communal thing. Well, I mean, yes, there's a communal thing, but there's also the commitment to the moment and to the full experience, which is what you, you were talking about in terms of you go into the theater and you have to watch the thing start to finish and you do it in a darkened space right. You can't hit quiet. pause. You can't hit pause. You're not distracted by other things. It becomes immersive. You become completely inside that movie for that period of time. Yeah. You have and, committed undeniably. And, and that's actually become even more important now because, and I'm saying this as a movie guy who loves movies, but when I watch movies at my house on my big screen TV, I'm my own worst enemy in right. terms of pausing it all the time. Whereas if you go out, you can't do that. Right. You all right, have we've only, to sink it. Only got about a minute yeah. or so left here. What, what's the biggest challenge? Why, you know, it's, it's a small business, it's growing. What's the biggest challenge? What's your biggest hurdle? Uh, the biggest hurdle is sorting through the vast amount of material now. There's a huge boom in the number of films being made and trying to find the good ones has gotten harder and harder, and that is one of the biggest roles we provide for the community, is that curation, that we've actually watched five mediocre to not good movies for every good one that we actually program. It means that you have to sift through a lot of chaff. That, that work's not done for us. What about for you, biggest challenge? Uh, it's, it's kind of a time thing. There's so much noise out there right now, um, and there's so many things competing for everyone's attention that to be able to remind them about the magic that can right. happen in the theater, uh, that is kind of the challenge right now. People, people want to see what's on, on, where do they go? Give me the website so people can go check out the Bodecker. TheDairy.org, we're part of the Dairy Arts Center. And over here, you want to get to the IFS. Uh, International Film Series, Munzinger Auditorium, West of Folsom Stadium. Up in Boulder. And, uh, yeah, internationalfilmseries.com. Great stuff. Yeah. Boys, thank All you, right. thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio, and check out the Independence Institute, independenceinstitute.org. See you next week.